Okay, in this tutorial, we're gonna take a tangible hand-drawn portrait from one of our sketchbook assignments, and we've already put it into PhotoSpeak, that's in another tutorial, and we're gonna actually combine that with the Artivive technology, and we're going to make an AR experience with this portrait. So this demonstration will show how to use Artivive, but also how to combine the two apps. So the first thing that you'll need is to make sure that the photo speak video and the photo of the drawing is in your photo library. Then you're going to use the Safari or Google to go to the Artivive website, and that takes you to the Bridge site. This is where the students had created their logins as well. So they have been to this page already. I recommended that you set up those accounts on um, a day or more prior to needing to use the bridge portal. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, I've been playing around with the app with a student work of art as well. So where it says add artwork, artworks one of five, I've used one of my artworks. Um, so I have four more available as a teacher and students will have up to five as well. So I'm gonna click add artwork. Oops, I'm gonna give it a name. going to click add artwork. The first image is going to be whatever the students will need to scan. So if you're doing this from the teacher perspective and you want students to be able to scan a few works of art in your room, you could upload the file that will either be on the digital screen or tangibly hanging on the wall. So I'm going to select file from my photo library, something that I've already taken and I'm gonna use that. Okay, and then here, this, um, they're calling it a video. It really can be any type of file um, or GIF and, or video. And so you're gonna select that file from your library and I'm gonna use the photo speak video. So it's that 35 seconds long, whatever I downloaded from my photo speak. I'm gonna add that. <clears throat> you do have the option to overlay that as a transparency. And I think for this work of art, um, I'm gonna allow it to be a little bit transparent. So I'm gonna play with the threshold a little bit I think I'm gonna take it down a little and test that out. So the first image is whatever the students need to scan, whether that be a digital image that you're gonna project up on the screen, artwork that you're gonna hang in the classroom or their own artwork that could go in the hallway. The second image is whatever the students want to appear as the AR experience on those iPads from the viewers. I'm gonna click add. Uh, let's choose, I can't remember what I've done before. Let's choose adjust the video and see how that goes. It will take a moment to process. So you may want to have some sort of reflection 
or really short uh, check-in activity if you're doing this with students. It's not an immediate processing. Okay, typically from what I've seen so far, this processing artwork bar will stay up far longer than it actually takes to process. So I've been just going back to my home screen to try it out and see. So let's test this. We can imagine that this work of art that we want to create that AR experience with is hanging on the hallway and any student with an iPad could click the Art of Vive app. The first time you click it, you need to allow access and then it won't ask you again. And it's gonna bring up this screen kind of like when students scan a QR. The difference is when you point it in the direction of the okay, artwork. This, this is Harris. Right now I'm doing my artist statement and I'm telling you about how I created this caricature of myself using Sharpie and colored pencil and crayon. One of the things that I think I should improve upon next time are my coloring skills. I like the style of the drawing and the dark lines that help outline the caricature. <laughs> okay, I paused my own voice there to show you a couple of things. If the artwork is up on the wall, the advantage of using this rather than a QR code is that you don't have to set up individual QR codes for each work of art. I know that that has been a personal uh, challenge for me when I've wanted to manage some of those digital art displays and link the artist statement to a QR. The next thing that I hope you saw that was pretty cool is that the student, all they have to do is point the iPad at the artwork and it does the work. It's part of the AR experience is being able to still see what's around the artwork. So I picture that it's more like viewing the walls of Hogwarts where the pictures start to move. So it takes a second to recognize. But as you can see, my iPad can still see all the other parts of my classroom right now. And hey, as I move it, Sarah. it changes the right point now, of view I'm with that image. Statement, and I'm telling you about how I created this caricature of myself using to improve upon. So Artivive has a lot of capabilities as uh, for student viewing of artwork to create that digital experience. Maybe it'll be the buy-in for a student who's really into technology um, or lead them down a path of looking at AR a little bit further. The other thing I thought of from the teacher point of view is that you could use it for some of those reflections. So if you had a few images that you knew you were going to display, you could transpose other information or a second image on top of that for students to compare or reflect on. The Art of Ive um, YouTube channel shows lots of other applications and far more interesting examples of how to create depth between the real live in-person image and the image that appears on the screen as well. It's just not something that I've played with yet.